Hiya, it's uh, I'm Mark, Mark Keery. Um, uh, I'm sort of uh, working from collage. Um, it's what I do really. I've been making art for about too long, about 40 years or something. Um, and I paint on paper, first of all, using gouache and uh, big poster sort of things. And I'm just going to show you a little bit about my sketchbook pro processes because I make these little collages in my sketchbook. Um, it's become quite regular over the last year or so, I suppose. And I just fill up these books with lots and lots of collage. But the, these, are, these are painted. They're, they're little um, offcuts from paintings that I, I make. I sort of make quite big paintings. You've probably seen them on Instagram or something, you know. And um, then all the offcuts, bags of paint, painted paper, I sort of take little snippets and put them together in my sketchbook. So that's what you can see here, really. Um, so you get the idea. I'm working on this piece at the moment. And, uh, you know, I've taken a load of little snippets and stuck them on some paper and then cut out the shape that I really want to use. And I'm sort of looking at, you know, this is like the moon and this is like a shaft of light coming down. And these are some stairs going up towards the moon. That's what I'm playing around with at the moment. It's kind of a little bit of poetry. Um, yeah, I'm going to be doing something a little bit like this. I don't want to give too much away, but something like this for 2020. Um, I've got uh, an artist's details in this bag. I'm not going to go into that information. You're not going to take a peek in there either. Um, and I'm messing around with words from that piece of information and developing something here. The only thing I can show you probably is not this one. Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hi, uh, my name's Ellie Porter Trubert. I am an artist living and working in Lebanon Township, New Jersey, USA. And the squeaking is my dog playing with a very special new toy. So I apologize for that. Um, my work, I have trouble defining. Often when people hear I'm an artist, the first question, of course, is what kind of work do you do? And my work spans a broad range of media, um, beginning with photography and going up through sculpture, um, alternative photography, site-specific work out in nature. And um, lately, I've been working on a lot of circular pieces or um, mandalas, sometimes I refer to them. And they are basically assembled out of things that I gather on my walks. I'm definitely a collector, not quite a hoarder, but I do have boxes and boxes of rocks and shells and sand samples um, going back to, you know, childhood, really. And all of those things are being put to good use now. This is um, the latest mond I'm working on. And... The stones on the edge are a type of shale found um, in the Delaware Water Gap, Worthington State Park. The white stones are pebbles found on the beach in Bridgehampton, New York. These are pawpaw pits. Um, the pawpaw is the only um, tropical fruit tree native to North America. These are um, these incredibly smooth and flat stones that I find along the river where we live, which is the Muskinetcong River. Um, i never seen them before this year. We lived here 20 years, but one of the major tropical storms seemed to have dredged them up. These are hickory nuts, and in the center is a gall, which is a kind of growth that you find on oak trees, and then surrounding it are talons from I believe turkey vultures that my friend Nisa gave me and pits from 
wild plum trees that grow along our road. And then the base of this is sand. Um, and it's sand, again, from our river, the Muscanetcong River. And you can see it has little shells in it, um, more of those flat stones, um, all kinds of interesting things that pop up. And this is the full piece. Hello, my name is Michael Kopeloff. I'm an artist currently based in London, but I'm originally from the northwest uh, of the UK. Um, I'm just going to take you around my studio. So, here's one of my most recent works um, that I'm going to show you. This is a work I was doing about um, probably about uh, three years ago, so I was kind of painting. Uh, I've kind of moved on to making these glasses. Wait, so here's another pair of glasses. And uh, before making these, the point between that and making these, uh, these are cast in resin. And my work looks at uh, interconnected structures, uh, looks at the the, uh, the world we live in and how everything's connected to everything. Thank you. This is a view out my window in my studio. I uh, look at it all the time and it reminds me of uh, a quote by Henry David Thoreau where he said, it's not what you look at that matters, it's what you see. Looking seems to be a passive um, activity where seeing seems to be very active. I think about this a lot. I found this burlap in my studio one day and I was inspired by it, so I collaged it onto a canvas. I love the weave and the texture of the burlap. I wanted to capture th those elements in this painting. Hello, I'm Magda Peltz. Um, I'm uh, in Sala 752. It's space uh, for art. The space is uh, quite empty now because I have uh, tidied it for something new. I'm looking at uh, these magazines. I have a lot. I have uh, tracing paper, I love the uh, transparency of it. I'm looking uh, for some figures and the uh, relationship between them. I'm listening to the music. And, and waiting um, for something to come to me. 2020 changed everything in my life. It was full of pain for me. But, and the crazy woman is still dancing.
Welcome to my creative chaos in my studio here. Um, I just moved recently, so it's a little bit all over the place, but I also like it to be all over the place. Um, and my own kind of organized mess, creative chaos, uh, organized chaos. Anyway, so I'm here to tell you a little bit about my process. I am recently, my latest obsession is um, these sort of freeform crochet pieces. Um, and this one is gonna be a wearable piece, possibly. Um, I don't know, it keeps morphing into like a wall hanging or like a large scale sculptural piece. Um, I think this is gonna be a wearable piece though. Um, to me, the, I'm gonna show you how it looks on. Um, so it's got a long way to go still, but I'm super excited about how it's going, the process is going. Um, uh, let's see where it's going here. So, you know, it's the human body, right? Is the best canvas ever. Like this sort of like a walking art. Um, I've always been inspired by that. Um, so this is, these are going to be the straps here. I have this one's already attached and the other one is developing and there's going to be a lot more going on in the front, obviously. And, um, yeah, I've gotten really in love with like process art through the pandemic. It's really saved me and kept me out of my head the best. So, yeah. Hi there, I'm Pete Mountford. Um, this is my studio, it's at home these days. I've had other studios before, but nowadays I'm at home. Um, so this is for the 2020, in fact, that's the piece for 2020, it's almost finished, but you can't see it, because uh, as we know, it's a secret until it gets to New Jersey next year. Um, what you can see, um, my work's a lot of it in the recent past, it's been lots of work over many years in different phases, both abstract and figurative. But uh, this is a piece I made uh, over 2020, in fact. It's called Taking Off the Jewel Fried, um, I Can't Breathe, We All Breathe, I Can't Feel, We All Feel. And basically, it's looking at humanity with the sort of, um, and the world in all the flags together with sort of dark forces against the Rainbow Coalition in the macro and the micro. Um, there's some text I've written of that that's available on my Instagram and so on. But as you can see, it's got kind of tracing paper behind lots of painted things. You've got a little kind of, Brexit arrow and kind of Covid symbol in, into there. Very proud of this piece. That vein carried on very much with these here, which were my um, uh, big farmer is watching us, the us very much in quotation marks. It's just all these conspiracy theorists, particularly around the masks and um, the anti-vaxxers. And as you can see, there's actual masks in there. And I've put all these various conspiracy things like the the eye, which is on the dollar bill, of course. 
ironically, and various other little symbols that I've found out about. And then the kind of skin tones are like humanity. Here are two of the sort of pinky ones. There's brown ones and so on, as you can see in one of the other photos. Um, and the frames are very much sort of this idea of DIY cobbled together, not really secure. I quite like that homespun kind of thing, which I think says quite a bit as well. And with the Union series here, I'm playing with the notion of this England and Britain kind of mixed up thing. Uh, so these are a series of prints that will be uh, other bits still to be added on. And likewise, the Middle England series over here, which is um, taking the Daily Mail headline and actually working into it. The green shapes are kind of golf courses and then these these cutouts will be collaged in and painted on and I'm just coming back to that series now. So that's very much going on, that's what the work's about and there we are. Hello, my name is James Post, and I am a tattoo artist in Easton, Pennsylvania, and I'm a part of the 2020 art show put on through M Galleries, and I'm a tattooer and a painter and drawer, and I think a lot of the... Uh, tattoo world is built on the past of previous tattooers you're standing on the shoulders of giants or the imagery that is most prolific and has withstood many decades of time and that people want to continue to get the same images um so there's a uh more of the british american traditional style tattooing that has seen a, a good revival because in, in tattoos, the type of imagery like that and the way it's applied will uh, have the longest longevity on a person's skin. They're more bold. And you search through all those images, you try and uh, build on them and uh, try and find something maybe clever that can go with it or mash things up or change them slightly, but, or just work on ones that have been really refined, uh, whether it's a cowboy or a rose. And then what really also excites me is the Japanese tattooing and tattooing in China and Vietnam and South Korea. Um, the Japanese style built off of uh, manga and early woodblock cuts. And uh, now with modern tools, uh, you just develop that, or you, you try and chase that aesthetic that has been uh, really refined over the past 150 years. So that's what uh, I try and do as I practice daily and just try and uh, figure out why those uh, aesthetics are so uh, appealing. Thank you.
Hello, I'm David Lamort. I am an artist living in New Jersey. I mostly paint and do some sculpting and collage. Um, I like to do uh, work that has a slight pop sensibility. I take images from media and everyday life and I'll mix them together in my painting. Uh, along with uh, being a bit process oriented as well. Um, I'm really drawn to uh, the relationships between images and how the work will often the images will try and work together as well as juxtapose from each other and work against each other. Um, I'm exploring, uh, I've been exploring small work for a very, very, very long time. And more recently I've expanded uh, into much larger paintings, and it's really opened me up in some interesting ways. It's accidental. I don't know what will happen. And I may need to throw it away. Sometimes the fight, the fight to improve it and to make it better. That's what makes the painting interesting. And if everything is safe, then it's a little bit boring. The first painting that I created in this series happened by mistake. I was planning to work with, with a grid and, uh, and suddenly these flags appear and I liked it and uh, <laughs> I kept working on it. So one painting led to the other and here I am. I have great fun to create them and I, they still surprise me and still discovering new things about, about this uh, series. For me there is also a little bit sad side. The triangle is used by the Nazis to mark uh, people in the, in the Second World War. So homosexuals uh, had the pink triangle mm -hmm. and the uh, Jewish people had yellow star. So that is two, two, yeah, two triangles. So there is that kind of information where we stop and see people and see symbols instead. And then it's easier to dehumanize them. I started to create the landscape at, at the back during the unrest in Israel and Gaza. The landscape was a fragmented. Obviously, it was a suggested background, but it's almost like a, a ruined background. A, and then I take these triangles and I, I cover it and I hide things. The thing that you, you don't want to see or you don't want to talk about. I, I, I look for contrast and I, I want them to be happy, but also there is this maybe not so happy side. Hi, my name is Martha Wojewski, and I am a foreign artist based in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, and I am part of the 2020 exhibition by M Galleries. So as a fine artist, I am known for my oil paintings, which depict everyday American suburban night scenes, 
Um, and in those night scenes, they have like this very theatrical lighting. And a lot of the paintings I like to depict into, into them are like very mundane things that you would probably pass in your everyday life, such as like telephone wires, laundromats, um, houses on the corner, parked cars on the side of the street, uh, dumpsters, anything you can think of that's like probably pretty boring and something you see all the time is stuff that I really like to include into my oil paintings. Um, a lot of my work is just about like kind of like highlighting and admiring something that you probably don't really get the chance to appreciate while going on in your everyday life but my paintings are kind of like kind of solidifying that like precious moment in the present time another thing about like a kind of establishing a present time are like the way i'm able to depict the parked cars on the side of the street so even if i'm making like a painting of like a 2015 hyundai tuscan um years go by and that painting in particular is going to kind of look pretty archaic but I am just trying to make make something have like that celebrate that present moment. But then like you know, as years go by, it's gonna have that like that kind of nostalgic kind of like memorabilia kind of vibe to it. So yeah, lots of my work has like that celebrate. It has, gives out that atmosphere. Um, gives out that theatrical lighting based on like how the street lights are able to highlight certain things. Another thing I really enjoy painting are like the bare trees because bare trees like have like that similar like tendril kind of look that like telephone wires have so it really ties the composition together into my work. So um, once again my name is Martha Wojciechowski and I'm part of the 2020 exhibition I'm really excited to be part of it. Hi, I'm Simon the Potter. I work with wild clay and reverse engineered clay. Material matters. In exploring properties, I try to capture deep time in a moment. This is a very laborious process that requires nine parts of physical labor and one part bliss. Bliss meets grit. When both merge and become one, then work does the work and grit and bliss become just bliss.
Okay, so I'm working on this large painting at the moment and various smaller works as well, simultaneously. How did you come up with this colour combination? Okay, so I started with red because I guess the first colour is anybody's choice. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. And, um, uh, but immediately after that, um, you start responding to what's already there. So this very um, deep Indian yellow um, looks opaque when applied when applied um, thickly, opaque um, in pasto. And uh, the blue, I chose it partly uh, because I was thinking about um, its relationship with the red and the yellow, how it would make the yellow kind of have a purple haze around it. But also because uh, when it bunches together and you get a large kind of dense area of blue, it behaves very differently from when you get an individual brush stroke that's surrounded by red. Where are you going to go from here? Well, <laughs> who knows? I have to finish the blue first. It's joining all the Indian yellow uh, tracks together in a particular, uh, according to a particular set of determined rules and then I'm going to do some more lines but I haven't decided yet uh, so so the blue is going to stop at this at this height it's not going to go beyond the height of the uh, Indian yellow uh, so I'm going to do some more lines that link other elements of the painting but I haven't I haven't decided on the colour or the nature, the quality of the line yet. I might use quite a big floppy brush or quite a wide brush or I might do lots of very detailed lines. I haven't decided yet. I like to do something where uh, the choice of tools and the, uh, the choice of brush is maybe incongruous with what I'm trying to do so that uh, I'm setting up a, a something to negotiate, a problem to solve through the process, through the actual making of it, rather than something that is, is so naturally um, or easily accomplished. And also I think the paintings are at the most interesting when there's a negotiation of complexity, so where they're not too... Um, uh, one-dimensional, where there's uh, a contradiction between different elements, where they have to negotiate each other and establish a relationship between existing parts in order to resolve themselves. Hi, I'm Joe Casanova and I am at the Rotunda Gallery in Metuchen, New Jersey um, at an exhibition of my work. I'm standing in front of a piece called Turning Joy, um, which is a piece from the beginnings of the pandemic. Um, this show is all work during, done during the last two years. Um, this piece is significant for me uh, because it uh, really is a turning point in making my work. Um, I think the conditions of the pandemic um, being that of sort of fear, anxiety, um, the unknown, um, isolation, um, made a lot of things happen in the work and brought a lot of things to the forefront that I've been working with but not being able to execute on for a long time. Um, and this piece is one of the first pieces that really brought that stuff to bear. Um, as you can see, it's a three-dimensional painting. Um, paper is something I really like to work on and have always worked on paper. Um, what happened here was I realized that 
as much as I was cutting paper before and bending it, if I had a painting on both sides, I basically can make the painting sculptural and I can have the back talk to the front. So this painting has a, a general painting on the back in purple and white, and then all of this sort of activated space on the front, which is more um, sort of compositionally energetic. three-dimensionality of the work, right, and, Hi, my name is Tracy Ditola. I'm an artist from Oakland, New Jersey, and I'm here in my studio. My work contains a lot of symbolic images, and that comes from my background in art history. I teach art history, and when I was an undergraduate, I really loved learning about the Northern Renaissance and how everything in all the paintings meant something. It was a visual way of telling a story. So that really spoke to me, and I translated that idea over to my own paintings. So what I do with my paintings is I set up still lifes, pretty large scale still lifes. I take a picture of them and then I paint them and they contain everyday objects. They're set in domestic spaces and what each painting is about is really about me <laughs> and what's going on in my life. So my paintings from, you know, when I first started till now are basically a visual narrative of my entire life, which sounds really self-obsessed, but I guess every artist is really self-obsessed. Um, and that's all I really have to say about them, which is weird for someone who is so self-obsessed. Bye.
Frank sent me his 20 words a while ago. They were, 2020 was heavily defined by the COVID-19 pandemic, which led to global social and economic disruption, mass cancellations and postponements. So, fairly miserable stuff. Then the next day, he sent across a new set of words, which were, 2020, I hope so much for the day and the gift of the work for the day is going well. And he asked me which words I liked better, the negative take or the positive one. And I was thinking about this while I was looking at a photograph that he'd posted on Instagram of a slice of tomato on asphalt. And I thought about that song, You Say Tomato, I Say Tomato, by Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong. It's all about the different ways of pronouncing the same words. And in the lyrics, the couple discuss how these differences are the reason they should call the whole thing off, knowing, of course, that it would break their hearts to do so. So I couldn't decide between Frank's two set of, sets of words. I didn't really want to choose because both seemed apt descriptions of lockdown. Instead, I wanted to make a painting that could tolerate multiple perspectives, just as we had to with our dramatic mood shifts. Also, I'd been taking a lot of photographs in France where there was blazing sunshine and blue skies in the middle of winter, making hot days out of two to three degrees. It was such a beautiful coming together of opposites. Just like the word blue, it's the happiness of summer and the darkness of depression. And as for the blues, there's a whole history there of art being a way to express hardship. In the same way, I guess, there's a whole history of how this little painting came into being. I start with a beginning. I mean, I know that sounds a bit silly, but I want to make the point that each piece of work has already begun before the first brush stroke. So I've laid down a part translucent, part white gesso ground that talks of rupture. Then it's a process of staining and building up layers that become more and more logical in their reaction to the beginning until I reach a composition that projects something impulsive and experimental, which sits comfortably with something very structured. Thank you for watching and thanks to Frank for his words. way home. Love the picture of my beautiful words, of your night, of getting my first shot of the time with you, and likewise in the gift of your night, of getting together for a while ago, and can we do something to get it done? at a time to be on our way home. Love the picture of your beautiful words, of your night, of getting my first shot of the time with you, and likewise in the gift of your night, of getting together for a while ago, and can we do something to get it done before we leave for a while? Love the picture of my beautiful words of your night, of getting my first shot of the time with you, and likewise 
and the gift of your night of getting together for a while ago? And can we do something to get it done before we leave for a while? And we will be ready for a few hours at a time to be on our way home. Love the picture of my beautiful words, of your night of getting my first shot of the time with you, and likewise, and the gift of your night of getting together for a while ago, and can we do something to get it done before we leave for a while, and we will be ready for a few hours at a time to be on our way home.